That was beautiful. That is my friend Millie Topping, who is part of our children's ministry, and her mother is on staff, and that was beautiful. Thank you so much. I am Hunter, and I um, work in our children's ministries at First Presbyterian Church, and I work in our preschool, and we are so excited to have you here today on Christmas Eve, as we are so excited um, as we await the birth of our Lord Jesus, and we are so excited, and we could not be more excited to be here today. And I just want to say that this service is designed for kids, so noises don't bother us. We love the wiggles and giggles. Please don't let that um, discourage you as you're here. So um, the louder, well, not the louder, the better. But um, we love kids, and um, we're so glad you're here. And we just want to let you know that for tomorrow is a Sunday, but tomorrow we will have one church service, and that's going to be at 10 o'clock in the sanctuary. And for all the kids that are coming, I've asked you to bring your favorite gift that you will get tomorrow to show me, and we will share it in the children's sermon. So tomorrow morning when you come, there will be no Sunday school. Um, there'll be no nursery. We will just join together in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock and have a brief worship before we begin our celebratory day. Um, New Year's worship also the following week is going to be right in this room and we'll have one service as well and that will happen at 10 o'clock. And we hope that you join us for that as we have our annual worship as one where our contemporary and traditional merge together here as we worship as a church family together. So we are super excited. If you look inside um, the church bulletin, there is an insert that talks about read the Bible in 90 days. And so as we start the new year, we're challenging our church family and anybody that would like to join in um, with reading the Bible through in 90 days. And there's a reading plan in there. We, um, we would love it if you join us. If you flip over the reading plan, there's a QR code that Rebecca and Joel have been working on and you can sign up. So you can do a paper version or a digital version with the um, Bible app called YouVersion. So it's really, really great. We hope that you join in. And I think that we're gonna have a competition. I don't know. Um, so, so sign up. Let's see who can read the Bible in 90 days. And now I would like to introduce one of my most favorite families, um, the Kiger families. It's baby Dottie and Alice and their mom Lauren, and they are going to light our Advent wreath. So if you will please read the people section, um, the Kiger family will read the leader section. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. Awesome, now we are going to sing, O Come All Ye Faithful.
All right, I think it's on now. All right, I'm inviting our kiddos to either come sit with me on the steps or sit on the... Now remember, it's Christmas Eve, folks. It is Christmas Eve. Okay. Excellent. So come on up. I am so happy to see you. We have... Today is the day that we're on our very best manners, right? We've got um, a lot hanging in the balance with our behavior um, for tonight. Hello, girl. How are you? All right, so, all right, hey there, take a seat. I'm so glad you're here. Now listen, um, if I managed to operate the computer properly, kids, and if you've been coming to church here before Advent, you received a book in the mail. Hey, kiddos, come on up. How are the Furleys doing? Um, you, you should have gotten a book in the mail from me in a bright, shiny envelope, and it was an Advent book that made noises, right? And it told the story of Advent, and, and you could push buttons, and it would sing songs, right? So today, um, that book that I sent to you was based off of this wonderful Bible that Jim sends to folks when people get baptized, well, when little kids get baptized. Have you ever seen this book before? It's called the Jesus Storybook Bible. No. We have a big one has it. You do. That's right. That's wonderful. So this is um, the Jesus Storybook Bible, and if you don't have it, I can show you where to get it. And if you're interested in that Advent book that I'm talking about, where are you going to get it? Upstairs? In, the, in your classroom? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to read a couple of pages off of this, and then my friend Whitney's going to come up and help lead us in some... Um, Miss Angela's not here today. All right, so let's see. All right, everybody look at me and pay attention. Angela's on vacation. <laughs> All right. Sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. Now, Mary and Joseph had to take a trip to Bethlehem, the town King David was from. But when they reached the little town, they found every room was full. Um, can I show? Yes. Okay, I see it. Yes, there's Bethlehem. Every bed was taken in charge. Go away, the innkeepers told them. There isn't any place for you. Where would they stay? Soon Mary's baby would come. They couldn't find anywhere except an old tumble-down stable. So they stayed where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. Hold on, let's see what's going to happen. And there in the stable amongst the chickens and the donkeys and the cows in the quiet of the night, God gave the world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born, his baby son. Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm. They made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough as his cradle. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift. Thank you, Jesus. Um, it's like yeah. Um, why are they all looking at the Jesus? Well, let me finish and we'll find out. Um, and they gazed in wonder at God's great gift wrapped in swaddling clothes. See, they're gazing in wonder, Charlie. And, um, and he was lying in the manger. Mary and Joseph named him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us. Because, of course, he has. All right, we're going to sing our first song, Away in a Manger. Everybody stand up. And everybody look at me. Everybody take a seat. That was wonderful. So, so he pulled out all the stops. He'd send an angel to tell Mary the good news. He put a special star in the sky to show where his boy was. 
And now he was going to send a big choir of angels to sing, ha to sing his happy song to the world. He's here. He's come. Go and see him, my little boy. Now, where would you send your splendid choir? To a big concert hall, maybe? Or a palace, perhaps? God sent his to a little hillside outside of a little town in the middle of the night. He sent all those angels to sing for a raggedy old bunch of shepherds watching their sheep outside of Bethlehem. In those days, remember, people used to laugh at shepherds and say they were smelly and call them other rude names. You see, people thought shepherds were nobodies, just scruffy old riffraff. But God must have thought shepherds were very important indeed, because they're the ones he chose to tell the good news to first. That night, some shepherds were out in the open fields, warming themselves by a campfire, when suddenly the sheep darted. They were frightened by something. The olive trees rustled. What was that? A wing beat. Let's see. Oh, let's see, let's see. Look up. They turned around. Standing in front of them was a huge warrior of light blazing in the darkness. Don't be afraid of me, the bright shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you. I've come to bring you happy news for everyone everywhere. Today in David's town in Bethlehem, God's son has been born. You can go and see him sleeping in a manger. Behind the angel, they saw a strange glowing cl cloud, except it wasn't a cloud. What was it? It was angels, troops and troops and troops of angels armed with light. Um, and they were singing a beautiful song, glory to God, to God, to the fame and honor and all of our hoorays. Then as quickly as they appeared, the angels left. The shepherds stamped out their fire, left their sheep, raised, raced down the grassy hill, through the gates of Bethlehem, down the narrow cobbled streets, through a courtyard, down some steps, 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 past an inn, round a corner, through a hedge, until at last they reached what? A tumble-down stable. They caught their breath. Then quietly, they tiptoed inside. They knelt on a dirt floor. They had heard about this promised child, and now he was here. Heaven's son, the maker of the stars. A baby sleeping in his mother's arm. This baby would be like that bright star shining in the sky that night. A light to light up the whole world, chasing away darkness, helping people to see. And the darker the night got, the brighter the star would shine. All right, stand up. We're going to sing another song. Joy, joy to the world. Joy to the world. Yep. You know that one. Yes. I've got one thing for you before Jim comes up to, to, um, to give us the grown-up message, so I need some help. So listen, how many of you guys um, help decorate your Christmas tree? And how many of you guys love Christmas lights and you like to look at Christmas lights? And remember, we talked about a light in the story today. And although lights are magnificent, who is the biggest light of all that's come for us? The angels. And who did the angels come to tell us about? Jesus, that's exactly right. So we're going to pass these out. Where are you? All right. So on the count, don't put them on yet. And then Joel's going to turn the lights all the way down. Now, listen, we're going to turn the lights down. And um, let's see. Will you help? Well, don't, 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 um, don't put them on yet. We're all going to put them on at the same time. You want to help pass them out here. All right. Everybody take a pair. Yeah, go ahead. Everybody take a pair. And on the count of three, we're going to see a glorious light. And you're going to get to take these home with you. Did everybody get one? I have a lot. I have a lot. 
All right, does everybody have one? All right. All right, and once you get one, take a seat. All right, fold in the edges to get them ready. All right, fold them in. Have you never been to a 3D movie before? All right. All right, Joel, are you going to turn the lights off? All right, all right, on the count of three, put them on and look at the Christmas lights. Whoa, what do you see? What do you see? What do they look like? Oh, here, hold on. Do y'all have them on? Look at, now look at the lights. So I want you to take these home and I want you to remember that just like Jesus, when you invite his lightness into your heart and you accept that and it makes things totally different, just like when you put these on, you see snowflakes and stars, right? It, it makes the light totally different, just like Jesus' light when you accept him into your heart. So I'm going to close this in prayer, and you can wear these the whole time Jim gives a sermon. All right, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord, and thank you for sending your greatest light to us, which is your Son, Lord. And thank you for the gift of his birth that we're waiting for. And we are so excited that you've sent him to us, Lord. And we are so excited to be reminded that when we accept his light into our heart, he can change us, just like these glasses make things more glorious. In your heavenly name, amen. amen. All right, now you can go back to your seats. I'll get you one. Okay, good stuff. So here's what we're gonna do. We've got a lot of, we have a lot of these, uh, these little uh, eyeglass things or these, uh, these star gazers. So Hunter's gonna start handing them out and y'all can share. Hey, Dottie, come on up, girl. You wanna come up with me? Yeah, you're welcome to. Okay, so Hunter's gonna, Hunter's gonna hand them out, but don't put them on yet. We're gonna do the same thing with all of us. Why don't you get some help to hand them out, Hunter? Uh, Lena, you want to grab them? They're back. They're in the corner. They're in the middle right there. Great, great, great. So good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be together. So while they're doing that, I want to ask you a question. And you can shout this out for me. Uh, it has to be an inanimate object. So you can't say something cheesy like my family or, you know, that kind of thing. But what's the best Christmas present you ever got in your entire life? Come on, you guys never got Christmas? <laughs> What's the best Christmas present you ever got in your life? Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, okay, everybody? Great, great, great. Everybody got them? Got the lights? Okay, so Joel, we're gonna do the same thing. But hang on a second, so get ready. You gotta fold them up in the corner, you see, to fit your eyes. And then you put them on, everybody got them on. Isn't that amazing? Ah. Awesome, 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 awesome. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, and they work anywhere. You don't, they don't just work in church. So take them and have fun with them. So um, most, the best Christmas present you ever got in your life. Let me show you mine. And I said, you can't say something cheesy like family or a child, a grandchild. I mean, that's, that's, all, that's, that's great. But I'm talking about an inanimate object. Let me show you the absolute best Christmas present I ever got in my life. I was seven years old, and this is what I got. Can you put it up, Joel? 
Now that is not just a bike. That is a Schwinn three-speed banana seat Stingray with big handlebar uh, handlebars, and it is in, uh, they call it violet, but it was just bright, bright, glowing purple. And I got it on my, when I was seven years old for Christmas, it was absolutely the greatest bike in the world. Um, I started looking for a picture of it online, and uh, I realized that if I'd kept that bike, it'd be worth between four and $5,000 right now. So, <clears throat> but I didn't keep it. So here's what happened with that bike. I got it on my seventh, uh, the, when I was seven years old on Christmas morning. And, uh, my mom gave it to me. It was in my, we grew up in Miami, Florida. My mom and dad gave it to me, and I took it outside, and I went for a ride. Rode for a little bit. I came back, and I left it in the front yard. My mom said, don't leave that bike in the front yard, Jimmy. I left it in the front yard. I came in to get something. I came out, and it was gone. I had a bike for about 20 minutes, and it was stolen on Christmas morning. Here's what happened. Absolutely true story. I'm not exaggerating in any way. <clears throat> came in crying, lamenting, uh, my mom doing her best not to say I told you so. My mom just grabs me by the arm, she takes me outside, and we start walking down the street. And we walk down one side of the street, we walk down another side of the street. Absolutely true story. There was a house with a low fence, the gate was closed, and my bike was inside the fence. And there were about 15 guys, adults, having adult beverages on Christmas morning, not to say that judgmental or anything about that. And they were all there. And my mom went to the gate. She opened it. She walked in. She picked up the bike. She rolled it out. She got outside of the gate. She closed the gate. She looked at them for what felt like 10 minutes. And then she told me to get on the bike and I rode it home. And this is what happened for me. In that moment, while I watched that happen, to see my mom, strong, courageous, bold, I felt like I belonged to something that was strong and courageous and bold. And so for me, the, the present of the Schwinn is just absolutely incredible. It was an amazing bike. But what happened for me that day to let me know that, that I belonged to something that was that was greater, that I belonged to her, is just overwhelming for me. And you see, it's really how you see things in life. Just like these glasses, it's how we see. And I've realized this year that this is the first year in my life that no one that sat at the Christmas table with me in my childhood is still alive. And there's a certain sadness in the midst of that. And yet at the same time, there's an amazing gratitude because all those experiences, all that family life of belonging to a family that was strong and courageous and loving, all of that carries forward. It stays with us, not just in a memory, it shapes and defines us. The Apostle Paul says in his letter to the Romans, in life and death, we belong to God. Just like that morning when I knew I belonged to something that was strong and bold and courageous, that was loving. That's what Paul is saying. In life and death, we belong to God. And this is the experience of Christmas for us. It's that God came to earth. He became one of us so that we might share in his story. And that he can tell us that we belong to something that is strong and courageous and loving, a strong and courageous loving of family of God. And so my prayer for us today, my prayer for each of you, you're all here with a table that's set in such beautiful, powerful ways. Kids, beautiful sounds and love and grace and families of generations, all of that. Is that while you're together, I pray that you will see in this Christmas time, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, you will see and you will feel that you belong. You belong not only at the table that is set before you, but you belong to a family that's strong, courageous, and loving. It is so much better than any material gift that you can ever receive. Let me pray for us. Father, I thank you and praise you this day. I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you for the gift of these children. I thank you that it is in all, all in how we see it. I thank you that you've given us the privilege to see them and to see these families. 
to see them in beautiful, holy, eternal ways. And a reminder that we belong. We belong to a strong, courageous, loving family. And I pray that that would be what we receive in this season, to be reminded over and over and over again, not simply that we belong to each other, but that we together belong to you. In your holy name we pray, amen. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, all evening I've been telling myself, don't get up and say good morning, church. Don't get up and say good morning, don't get up. Um, so Merry Christmas to you. We have an opportunity as we gather in worship this evening to respond to God's goodness and his faithfulness uh, in several ways as we pray, as we collect our offerings, and as we share our prayers with one another. So I invite you first to find the connection card in your bulletin to let us know that you're worshiping with us. And on the back of that card, there's a place where you can offer your prayers. If you check confidential, only our pastors will see it. Otherwise, our elders, our deacons, our prayer teams will pray with and for you this weekend and throughout the week um, as we celebrate Christmas. Um, so you can tear that out and get that ready. Um, the other opportunity we have to respond is with our offering. And this evening, as we collect our offering, it will go to the Joy Village, a place where um, several of us will be traveling in, in a couple of weeks, um, and to support the 50 uh, children that are living there. It takes $167 a month to support just one child at the Joy Village. So I uh, encourage you to give generously, and, and all of that offering will be going um, to the Joy Village this evening. If you have a, an, a tithe or another offering that you're giving to the church, make sure you mark that and place it in an envelope. Um, there's envelopes available for you in the pew backs, uh, in the seat backs. I'm gonna invite Michaela to come up um, and get in place. As we uh, gather our, our prayers, our connection cards, our offerings, uh, Michaela is gonna offer an offertory for us as she sings, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Sisters and brothers, let us continue to worship. Thank you, Michaela. That was beautiful. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to gather together to worship you. We thank you for, for places where we can be generous to, to bring 
children joy. And we thank you so much for the Joy Village and Africa. We thank you so much for our own homes. And we pray, Lord, that you would fill all of us with your light and your love and your grace and your mercy. We pray, Lord, that as we celebrate your birth, Jesus, that you would be born anew within us and that your light would overflow in us and overflow in our homes and overflow in our neighborhoods and overflow in our cities and overflow in each country so that the whole world would know, Jesus, that you are Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So, oh, oh. Before we sing, we're going to do this. So let's let's uh, let's try this. Uh, kids, huh? Kids, come back up. Just for a moment. We'll bring your glasses with you. Everybody got your glasses? Okay. And just sit down on the carpet for a second. Okay. Come on back up. Hey Charlie. Hey, no, Rhett, let's stay down here. Okay. Come on, guys. Come on, Charlie. Let's come on down. We're going to sit down here. Okay. So you got your glasses? Okay. Joel. Wait, no, we're not going to do it yet. Belina, yeah. come here. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna, you're going to get up here. Okay, everybody get your glasses, all the adults too that have them. And we're going to we're gonna get a photo of everyone with their glasses, and then we're going to turn them down, and everybody can see it together. Okay? So you all set? You got them? Okay, all you adults got them on? Okay, you ready, Joel? Go ahead and get us, get us down again. And then stay, kids, because I got something else for you. Wow. How cool is that, right? Shoo, look around. It's all in how you see it. Isn't that amazing? Okay, turn it back up. Stay where you are, kids. Okay, Valini, now get, when the lights are back up, go ahead and did you get a picture for everybody? I tried. Okay. Y'all, y'all look okay, at keep me. them on, keep them on. You all I'm, look so amazing. I'm getting you by This section. is such a beautiful thing. <laughs> okay. Now, okay, kids, while you're there, Ms. Hunter's got another present for you. There's some jingle bells. And we're going to sing Go Tell It on the Mountain in a minute. And you're going to use the bells to ring in, you're going to be able to not only sing, but you're going to be able to use the bells. Hopefully there's enough for everybody. There's some extra ones over here, right? Everybody got them. And you can take those home because we would love for you to make as much noise as you can in your house with your family, all of that. And then remember us while they're doing it. So great. Okay. You guys all ready? Okay. So we're going to We're all going to sing, go tell it on the mountain. You're going to stay here. And then after that, then we're going to break out. Okay? So we ready? Ready, Ready, Gail? And we're all singing this time, right? We're all singing.
I come. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do the benediction and then you guys, as soon as I finish, you guys go back to where you are. So parents, if you'll stay, uh, and then as soon as you get your kids, then you can go, okay? <laughs> Unless you wanna leave them, I'd be happy to take any of them that you got. Uh, so, uh, so it's all how we look at it. I wanna thank you for being here. This is such a beautiful time for us to be able to celebrate the gifts of generations and just this amazing gift of these beautiful kids. So thank you for being with us. And now as we journey forward, I pray that you will receive the greatest, the greatest gift that you can. And it's not something that's material, as great as a bike may be. It's really the sense and the knowledge and the trust and the belief that you belong. You belong to something that is strong and courageous and loving. You belong to the family of God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, guys, go back to your families. Yeah, you can keep them, as long as you promise to ring them as loud as you can when you're at home. Good, good, good. Okay, Dottie.